welcome to our Hot Pot class. Um, we're going to uh, talk about a bunch of things tonight. And one of the things that I love about hot pot cooking, aside from the fact that the hot pots are really delicious, is this very simple homey cooking um, is such a window into Japanese cooking in, in its entirety. And if you can understand a little bit about how hot pot cooking is done, then you'll start to understand how all of Japanese cooking is done. And um, <clears throat> Japanese cooking, you know, I think in America we're mostly familiar with sushi, but it's a, sushi is a very small part of Japanese cooking, and there's an entire world out there. Um, and how, so tonight, hopefully, we'll get an idea of some of the key ingredients, some of the thinking behind cooking Japanese food, and, of course, how, it's all co how it all comes together in hot pot cooking. So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, just uh, by way of introduction, first of all, what is a hot pot? Uh, a hot pot is um, a medley of foods that are simmered together in, in a broth, in a liquid, um, in a pot. Now, these are, are uh, in Japanese called donabe, which are earthenware pots. Um, these are wonderful to cook for hot pots because the, the earthenware, the clay, uh, distributes and retains heat really well. Um, you know, if you think about Spanish and Portuguese culture, they use cazuela, which is also kind of a, a terracotta pot. It's the same idea. It really keeps heat. But if you don't have one of these guys, you can cook hot pot in anything. And um, we've made hot pot in cast iron skillets, uh, La Crusette, um, you know, even uh, stainless, stainless you know. So don't sweat the pot. But if you can get your hands on a hot pot, they're pretty great. I, you know, they're wonderful to cook with. Um, and the, the other thing about hot pots are they're not, a, they're not as thick as a stew, they're not as thin as a soup, they're kind of somewhere in, somewhere in between in terms of density and how, and we're going to talk about how you eat a hot pot and how you prepare a hot pot and it'll kind of make sense as we go along. Now, um, hot pots are very versatile cooking. They can be really simple, you know, Tuesday night at home, if you got you know, 12 kids, and you just, uh, like I do, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. but, uh, but if you have, a, you know, big family or friends together, you can, like, whip up a hot pot really quickly and make it that simple. Or it can be a really elaborate procession. And, you know, we were in, where were we, like, in, in Hakata, in southern Japan, like, in the oh. deep south of Japan, and we went to someone's house, actually, the, publish, the editor of the, of the newspaper of one of the big cities in, in uh, Japan called Fukuoka, and the hot pot lasted for four hours, maybe? It was unbelievable, and it just kind of, it was this kind of party that just centered around these foods cooking in a broth and a lot of booze. So, uh, and that's how we, you know, so you can make hot pots anything that you want as far as how you uh, serve it. And, um, you know, I've been to your house, Tadashi, and we've certainly, like, I know that Sunday night's hot pot night in the winter at the Ono family. So um, those can, can, you know, great celebrations. But my wife and I have hot pot sometimes, just the two of us. Um, last week we had hot pot for about five or six people who came in. We had a little hot pot party at home for some friends. So you can do a lot of things about hot pot. And so, and I think that in Japan, you know, you most, you'll find this kind of like a table side burner and uh, earthenware hot pot in most homes. And even when you were a kid, Tadashi, right? I mean, hot pots are a pretty big part of your life, I think. Oh, yeah. It's every week, you know. Yeah. At least twice a week, you know, especially in the winter time. And for very casual, easy dinner, or it could be fancy right. dinner too. Like if you use kind of like special beef, like Kobe beef type of thing, you can do shabu shabu, skiyaki type of thing. It's it could be very pricey right, for absolutely. a special occasion. But, right. Yeah. But you're so. worth it. <laughs> oh, we did? Okay. Thanks. Yeah, okay. That's all right. Um, but th thanks. Yeah, we'll <laughs> turn that off before we all ex explode. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, uh, so hot pots are very versatile. Now, let's talk a little bit about hot pot cooking. We divide hot pots by the kind of broth. So that they're made in. And tonight we're going to go through three different hot pots that will be representative of those types of broth. And I'll give you an idea of how you, know, how you can prepare hot pots. In the simplest manifestation, hot pots are 
foods cooked in simply water, and maybe water with kombu, and we're going to talk about that. But very simple, just water. Um, this kind of the next kind of hot pot is a hot pot that's cooked with uh, a flavored broth, uh, dashi, soy sauce, uh, possibly sake, mirin, yeah. things that we're going to talk about in this class. Uh, different flavoring, classics, Japanese seasonings. In the third manifestation of hot pots, you have a thicker broth that's usually cooked with a miso. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, too. And we're going to taste three different kinds of hot pots. I don't think one's better than the other. They're actually kind of all good. Uh, it just depends what you're in the mood for. And um, you know, they're all pretty simple. It's just you, know, you can mix and match. So um, that's, those are some things to think about, the type of broth. Um, the other thing, let me, yes, ma'am. There is a, a huge, it, first of all, it depends what kind of ramen. But let's say, how would you, you would. Ramen is originated from China. Right. So they use a lot of animal uh, soup base. Hot pot is normally uh, uh, like kombu and katsu dashi base or water, you know, so. Uh, and I think it's because if you're cooking a, like what you say, like a, a broth, let's say in, a, in New York, this um, tonkotsu ramen, so ramen from pork bones or from, you know, that's very popular now. And if you ever watch somebody make the soup for that, I haven't seen it here, but I've seen it in Japan where actually people take the head of a pig and, right, you know, so stick it in the there, yeah. bones, head, stock, yeah. sto and the stock's cooking for days. And that's, uh, a way of pulling out that, that sense, that, that essence of that pig, right? Uh, hot pots are a very different idea because one of the things that we're going to get into, this is pretty fast cooking, and one of the great things about Japanese cooking is that the seasonings are mostly fermented ingredients that, in a sense, fermentation is a process that creates flavor and a lot of other things. So when you use soy sauce or miso or mirin, which we'll talk about, or even dashi, there's a lot of flavor in those ingredients already. So when you mix that into a soup, you can actually cook things pretty quickly. And that is a hallmark of Japanese cooking, which uh, we're going to talk about. But you know, let me just say this about Japanese cooking. One of the things that I find very interesting, like if you think about Western cooking, um, we talk about impact, right? Like if you think, you know, like animal fats, spices, herbs, and you're building this flavor. To me, see if you agree. Tadashi, as an observer, that Japanese cooking is a lot about balance. Right. And you're not trying to build, like you're trying to kind of balance flavors, and also you're very concerned with the natural taste of flavors. Like, what is the essence of this shiitake? Or anything else that we have here. So you don't, you're not cooking as long, and you're trying to kind of subtract back to that, what's the natural flavor. So the cooking is fairly quick. Um, All the flavor is stays in this one part. Right. The, the flavor came, comes from a vegetable, mushroom, those uh, protein, you know, fish. So, you know, it, it just makes instant, very tasty broth in there. So instead yeah. of ramen, you have to cook it, like right. you say, you know, for a long time before, right. and then you just pour it in. So, so this is a completely different approach, yeah. and that's what makes it kind of fun. And like you say, when you start to have all those ingredients in, yeah. like with the second hot pot that we are going to cook tonight is a really lavish hot pot. And man, it's just the, so much flavor. It's so much so flavor in the soup. Like, it's really delicious. It's so easy. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it is easy, actually. 